Oh my goodness. No one gives you an adrenaline rush like the National Book Foundation. Oh my gosh. Three times in two months. Oh wow. Um, I have never imagined that I would be in this experience, so I'm going to play it by ear. Um, first, I have to thank the National Book Foundation for not only the multiple adrenaline rushes, but I need to thank Lisa Lucas and her entire team for not only making this beautiful night, but for making this beautiful experience for us and um, my fellow finalists. It has just been a magical experience, and I cannot thank their hard work and their team enough. Um, to the judges of this category, I can't see you, but I feel you. Um, I appreciate everything that you've done and for the opportunity that you have given me and again my finalists. To my shortlist finalists, I need to thank E.B. Zaboy, Rita Williams-Garcia, Alana K. Arnold, and Erica Sanchez. To share this experience with you has been an honor, an absolute honor. Your books... Your books have just been so beautiful, and to see my title amongst yours is something that I don't think I have quite understood yet. <laughs> um, and also I want to thank our fellow longlisters. I want to thank Angie Thomas, Jason Reynolds, Samantha Mabry, Matali Perkins, and Laurel Snyder. I am so proud to see our 10 titles together. I am proud to share this with you. Um, if, as many of you in this room know, if you write a book or you publish a book, it takes a village to make that book uh, something else. So I need to thank my village. I need to thank my agent, Lisa Grubka. I met her in 2006. She sent me an email, and we have been partners in metaphorical crime ever since. Um, I need to thank my team at Harper. If I name all of you, they will probably get the hook and take me off the stage. So I'm just going to say I need to thank Ebony, Bess, Gina, Renee, Kate, Suzanne, and Jen Klonsky. Also, assistants, I feel, make the world go round, so I'd like to thank their assistants as well. Yeah. And I need to thank a very special assistant, Elizabeth, whose emails always made me laugh during the process of writing this book. I need to thank my dear friend and my dear editor, Kristen Pettit. I first spoke to her on the phone on March 2nd, 2007, and the first thing I said was, I'm so happy to talk to you. And she replied, no, I'm so happy to talk to you. And we have been very happy to talk to each other ever since. <laughs> um, she has been my guiding light in this process, and more importantly, a good, good friend, which is so hard to come by in this world, and I appreciate her every single day and her family. Um, I am very sorry to Kristen Harper. This book was over a year late, and I hope that this absolves me uh, somewhat, so thank you. <laughs> I need to thank my lovely, lovely friends who, during the course of this, writing this book, they sometimes literally propped me up. Um, they met me for writing dates. They cooked me food. They poured me coffee. They poured me a few things stronger than coffee. They um, just gave me the will to write this book and to teach me what friendship is about. I thank them for that. I thank them for their senses of glorious humor. Um, at the end of the day, Far From the Tree is about family. I need to thank mine. <laughs> Both my father and grandmother have passed, but my grandmother was the most creative person I've ever met in my life, and she taught me that creativity is not inspiration. It's not that bolt of lightning. It's about getting up and making the coffee and getting to work to find the light that that light, the room that that lightning lit up for that one moment. Um, I'm really good at getting up and making the coffee. I'm trying to get better at that last thing. Um, my father passed away many years ago. He did not see this career of mine, but he taught me that you work hard not only for yourself, but for your family. Um, if he was here, he would be so proud, and then he would immediately say, you better get to work on that next book, kid. So I thank him for that. I thought when I lost them that I would never talk to them again, and I talk to them every single day. So thank them, especially when I was writing Far From the Tree. This book is dedicated to my brother, the best bungee buddy any big sister could ever ask for. When I was first thinking about becoming a writer, I said to him, well, what if somebody doesn't like it? What if they don't like my writing? And he said, well, what if someone does? And it's because of that conversation that I'm standing here today. Um, it is also a reminder that I was wrong and he was right, and I don't say that very often. I am so grateful to him. I am so proud of the man he has become. At the end of the day, my mom was the one who supported me throughout the entire process of this book. When we were kids and we didn't know a word, we would ask her what it meant, and she would say, let's look it up. And we hated that because we had to go get the dictionary off the shelf and look it up. 
She taught me how to be curious and how to be unapologetic as a woman about that curiosity and how important it is to have empathy, which are qualities I try to use every single day in writing for young people, especially teenagers. They are the toughest audience because they need to hear the truth more than anybody, especially in days like today. Writing for them has been the absolute biggest honor of my life. And every time I see this award and I think of this magical night, I will remember how important it is to do my job well and effectively and in honor of them. Thank you so, so much. Thank you.